In the city of Shanghai, Keenan Kong lived with his father, who worked as a mechanic. Kong lost his mother when he was only 12 after she perished in a plane crash. Her death had a profound effect on the boy, and he grew up resentful about the circumstances behind her death, while Keenan became selfish and arrogant. By the time he turned 17, Kong took to bullying Luo Lixin, the son of China Southeast Airlines CEO who owned the plane that Keenan's mother had died on. One day, Luo was attacked by a supervillain. Kong stood his ground and attacked the villain, forcing him to free Luo and retreat. After being interviewed by a reporter named Blaney Lan, Kong was noticed by a secret government organization known as the Ministry of Self-Reliance. Believing the teenager possessed the qualities of a hero based on the incident with Luo, they offered him the powers of Superman, the most powerful superhero in the world. Kanan accepted, though he tried to back out when he realized the procedure would be dangerous. Nevertheless, he was exposed to a large amount of energy, the life force of a dead Kryptonian. The procedure rendered the young man unconscious. Kanan was empowered with this life energy known as Ki, and in doing so gained powers on a level comparable to Superman. He could fly, generate heat beams with his eyes, had super breath, had enhanced hearing, speed, and strength, and possessed X-ray vision. Solar energy would empower him, while kryptonite would weaken him, though to a lesser extent than a real Kryptonian. Keenan Kong woke up with his new powers triggering, destroying a containment pod he had been placed in. Once he was subdued by other individuals empowered by the Ministry, Keenan was informed by the head of this organization, Dr. Omen, that he would be kept here and would be expected to cooperate with the government and work with them on their new team of heroes, the Justice League of China. Keenan was successful in helping on his first mission with the team, defeating a villain known as Sunbeam after he was hit with a blast of his powers, which are rooted in sunlight and thus empowered him. Upon this victory, Laney Lan showed up with the news crew, and on national television, Keenan revealed his identity and his role as the new Superman, as well as the existence of the Justice League of China. This news made waves around the world, while Dr. Omen harshly punished Keenan by blasting him with kryptonite, in retaliation for exposing her entire organization to the world. The whole experience did bring Keenan closer to the other two heroes of the Institute, though, and Keenan soon became friends with Batman and Wonder Woman. The three began operating as heroes based around Shanghai. Keenan even began to earn the respect of Dr. Omen who he convinced to let him return home and speak to his father about what happened to him. It was then that Keenan learned his father, Zong Dan, was a rogue operative known as a freedom fighter, who had long stood against the Chinese government in the name of freedom and democracy. His father convinced Keenan to abandon the League and work to help the freedom fighters. However, in the field, one of the fighters used a series of star organisms to take control of Batman and Wonder Woman, much to Zong Dan's astonishment. After all, Using mind control in the name of democracy was a deeply hypocritical move. Keenan and Zong Dan turned on the fighters, but Superman's powers, at this point unstable and unreliable, vanished at a critical moment, nearly killing the young man. Zong Dan was able to save his son by rushing him to the Ministry of Self-Reliance. They were able to save Keenan with a massive blast of solar radiation, though Dr. Omen was unwilling to trust Keenan's father. She let him go after he insisted he could help stop the rest of the Freedom Fighters, but not before hitting him with a compliance device, saying she expected him to surrender when all of this was over. Father and son were able to free the Justice League, who the Freedom Fighters used to hijack a commercial plane. The League worked together to fight both the Freedom Fighters and another Chinese superhero team known as the Great Ten in order to save the aircraft and the people on board. This victory did not come without a cost, however and Keenan's father was killed in the battle. Now, with both of his parents having been killed on different accidents involving a plane, Keenan was left devastated. However, this time, the grief and overall experience had changed the young man for the better. Keenan began getting a new sense of responsibility and desire to act for the goodwill of the people, much like his father did. Before he died, Zong Dan said the ministry was responsible for Keenan's mother being killed going so far as to say he had proof. Wonder Woman, real name Peng Delian, and Batman, real name Wang Beishi, both agreed to look into this matter, 
and the three swore that from now on they'd decide what to do based on what was right, even if it meant breaking ministry protocol. Keenan agreed to play along with the ministry for now, but swore he would get revenge on whoever killed his mother. Meanwhile, Dr. Omen was able to use the compliance device to retrieve Zongdan's body, and declared that thanks to this device she'd be able to bring him back. She would do anything for the man she loves. With a growing public presence, Superman and the Justice League found themselves the face of a new and prolific team of heroes. Lex Luthor sponsored a major event celebrating the team during a visit to Shanghai, personally presenting awards to the heroes. At the suggestion of an operative of the Ministry, Keenan began training under a martial artist named Master Ai Ching, with an effort to improve his overall combat prowess but also potentially find a way to stabilize his powers for good. Ai Ching was a tough master but saw the potential for heroism in the young man, especially after he witnessed it firsthand. He began to advise Keenan on matters concerning the trigrams of Taoism and a way forward for the hero. Keenan learned to deal with the grief of losing his parents and to find inner focus, and control over his powers began to improve. It was then that the true purpose of Luther's visit to Shanghai was revealed. He had managed to contact the Ministry of Self-Reliance, and they agreed to send Keenan along as a security consultant for a trip back to America, in an effort for the government branch to build ties with one of the most influential companies in the world. Keenan reluctantly set out, with Ai Ching accompanying him and providing translation for Luther. In a misguided experiment, Luther had Keenan open a portal to what turned out to be a hell dimension, resulting in Superman arriving to save the day. The two supermen were able to close the portal together, while Keenan rejected Luther's offer for further help in stabilizing his powers. The event had secured the Man of Steel's respect for Kong, and Superman offered the young man some advice before returning him home. Keenan would work with Superman again during a dimensional incursion from another universe, and Superman would come to view Keenan as a reliable and powerful ally he could count on in a moment of crisis. The Hell Portal had also attracted the attention of Avery Ho, a speedster who joined the Justice League of China as their Flash. The growing league continued protecting their home, including against a threat called Superman Zero, an older Superman doppelganger that threatened to conquer all of China when Dr. Omen nearly fell to her death when Superman Zero attacked the Ministry headquarters. Keenan, who discovered his father was being held by the Ministry, demanded Omen tell him the truth about what she did to his family before he would save her. As she began to fall, Omen revealed she was Keenan's mother. Superman Zero snatched the woman in midair, so Keenan rallied with the Justice League to free his parents. The team was successful, but the attack had earned the attention of the Suicide Squad, who killed Superman Zero with a kryptonite sword wielded by Deadshot. They attacked Superman, but he was saved by the Great Ten and the rest of the Justice League. Keenan recovered back at the Ministry, where Omen explained that her identity as his mother was a cover to spy on Zong Dan's freedom fighters. When she was called back into the Ministry, she faked the death of her persona and abandoned the family. Her making Keenan Superman was out of a lingering affection for the boy, to a degree as she thought of no better way to ensure his safety than making him one of the most powerful heroes on the planet, admitting that not all of her time with the family was fake and she did truly care for both Keenan and Zong Dan in her own way. With little other choice, Zong Dang and Keenan grew to accept this story for what it was, and the concept of continuing to function as a family, however strange it might be. Later, Keenan was drawn into an operation being worked on by Deathstroke, and the assassin proved adept at using Keenan's own key-based abilities against the hero. Nevertheless, Keenan was able to aid in subduing the man, who was ultimately imprisoned in Arkham Asylum. On another occasion, Supergirl also sought out advice for Keenan about controlling her powers. He introduced Kara to Ai Ching, who trained the two together before they were called into action. The heroes worked together to defeat the villain and help the people of Shanghai, while the whole experience seemed to afford Supergirl a degree of insight into understanding herself, her past, and her own abilities. As the Justice League of China continued operating, they were accidentally drawn into conflict with the Justice League. Keenan and his friends were no match for the experienced heroes, but they were only lightly reprimanded for their reckless behavior in the conflict. Most members of the League got along well together, while Avery already knew Barry Allen. He was the one who trained her into using the Speed Force to begin with. 
Following this near conflict, the Justice League was able to stabilize Kanan's powers once and for all. It did result in a number of demigods being summoned to this realm, and it took the combined power of both Justice Leagues to save the day. Kanan was left altered by the event, becoming the living embodiment of the principles of Yin and Yang, after Ai Ching passed these abilities on to him. These new abilities greatly altered the nature of Kenan. He became robustly imbued with the diagrams of Taoism and magic itself, the true extent of which, to this day, he does not fully understand. He also became highly resistant, if not outright immune, to many forms of external magical attacks and effects. The Ministry, meanwhile, became dissatisfied with the loyalty of their Justice League, and began investing in creating their own version of the Green Lantern Corps under their direct control. The new Corps came into conflict with the Justice League, who went rogue and attacked them, while they found themselves a new ally, Kwang Jo, an Aquaman from the seas of North Korea. Together this team was able to reach a detente with the Corps, while Keenan was able to find further understanding over his new magical abilities, bringing the Justice League of China closer together than ever, and made the group intent on becoming China's greatest superhero team. In the near future, Keenan will join a larger superhero team in China called the Great Twenty, in part of a growing global trend of metahuman escalation and the tension surrounding it. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and thank you for watching my origins and bio for the new Superman. So this closes out my big Origins and Bios series for the various people that have called themselves Superman over the years. It's been a fun series of videos to make and I've really learned a lot about various Superman and that sort of thing. Even though I knew the basics of Keen and Kong, it was really fun going over this series highlighting this character that recently premiered as part of Rebirth up until Bendis took over as writing for Superman and all the Superman series ended, at least for now. So no, there isn't any active series featuring Keenan Kong, but that doesn't mean there won't be in the future, and I have to say I'm really hoping that we see more of this character because I gotta say, what I got, I really, truly enjoyed. I don't know exactly what I expected out of this sort of thing, but I was really impressed by how willing this was to be an honest series about what it would be like living in China and what it would be like for this superhero living under this condition. It's a story that doesn't really whitewash some of the problems with the Chinese government and the corruption associated with it, but it also doesn't make it entirely what that story is about or oversimplify the issue. The people working with the government are often seen as good people who just want what's best for the country and their home, but a lot of times that's mixed with either corruption or a willingness to cross lines in order to ensure safety, such as with Dr. Omen and with others such as Batman and Wonder Woman who are more willing to work with Keenan and work against the government because it's right and they were won over by him as a character. Keenan himself reminds me a lot of Miles Morales from Marvel. Those comparisons aren't really accidental. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of similarities between the two, but Keenan's written with a certain degree of authenticity that I quite enjoy. Jean Luen Yang is a really good writer who has done a great job in creating this new character that's very distinct from Superman. Right from the beginning, Kong is a bully and doesn't really care about other people. It's only over time and through meeting Superman, as well as the supposed death of his father, that Keenan really starts to become a hero, and that journey is a real victorious one and his powers becoming associated with the uh, various principles of reality associated with the cosmology of that belief system makes him an interesting character that's very distinct from Superman. The whole idea of him being immune to magic makes him a character that has something that Superman does not, in fact expressly does not. Superman is outright weak against magic, while Keenan seems heavily resistant to it. That's fun because Keenan will never quite be as strong as Superman. He's still a human with Kryptonian characteristics rather than an outright Kryptonian. But now he has this, and it makes him unique and a pretty interesting character in terms of what he's all about. The whole 
idea of his character it, it very much reflects the principles of yin and yang of there not being this perfect good or perfect evil and Keenan's kind of a mix he's not just some idealistic character he has his own issues he has the folly of youth and the aggression that he grew up with ingrained in him to a degree and it's an interesting character because of that he's not as cut and dry as superman is as much as i do like superman we already do have a superman so this idea of uh the new superman being a bit different is a fun one to me and when we talk about the chinese market and concerns about movies catering to them and having to deal with the censorship of that government I feel like comics such as these and characters such as Kenan Kong are a big way that we can inspire change in this country because we don't have control over it and we aren't going to anytime soon, we being the outside world, but there's nothing wrong with the Chinese people. It's their government that's got issues and by creating characters that inspire greatness, such as Superman and the entire Justice League of China, as they're all very fun characters, I think that's how you can inspire change from within. And that's the whole point of series like the new Superman series that DC created, is appealing to this market. And in creating these characters, I think you can kind of win people over a little more than propaganda or outright means of direct aggression or something like that. This is kind of what inspired Americans to begin with, is the idea of Superman, and it probably has inspired a lot of great things, just more than what people might realize in the first place. So for them to do this kind of works for me. And the whole idea of China wanting to create their own Justice League and their own version of these famous heroes also fits and fits into what I feel politically the government might do in response to the creation of the Justice League if that were to happen in the real world and that team were based around America. I feel like a lot of countries would be doing this. So it's pretty fun and pretty interesting overall. I would definitely recommend the series. It was a very fun read and I was sad to hear that it ended. And hopefully it just ended as part of the Bendis reboot of Superman that's happened. Because I'd like to see this character in some form or another soon, or in the future. Maybe if he doesn't have his own solo series, we'll kind of get the team-based setting that that new Superman had already transitioned to near the end of its run. So whatever plans DC has for this character, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him because he's a lot of fun and has a lot of potential in the future. So thanks for watching, let me know what you think in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.